Okay, this next lab that's coming up is lab number 10, the analysis of zinc aluminum alloy. It's about analyzing a metal. You may wonder, what does this have to do with a gas law? And we'll tell you, and you'll get to find out. And so you're going to be given some little shavings that is uh, shown here. And uh, they're going to be in a little capsule that will dissolve in hydrochloric acid. And then the acid is going to eat the metal and release some hydrogen gas. And then that's what we're going to apply the ideal gas law to. Let's look at our experimental setup for today. You're going to use your large test tube. That is in your uh, locker. Pinch clamp should be in there as well. Um, and a beaker. We'll provide everything else. Um, the TA will have the sample, um, the capsule that you're going to put the sample in. It's a little gelatin capsule. You can break it open. You get two little halves. And um, you can fill up your little metal shavings uh, inside there, close the capsule, and then you'll be able to put that in here. Um, get that from your uh, TA. Now, there may be some things that are set up there, but don't assume it's set up. We want everything to be airtight. Uh, like every connection, we want to be airtight, okay? Because you're going to have hydrogen, okay? You look at every connection and you think about where uh, hydrogen can get lost um, there. Today, you use tap water in here. Right. Follow the procedure to get this filled up um, properly and set up. Notice the, the way it's arranged there. Here's a picture of what it looks like. Notice in this particular um, setup here, we actually got some weird stuff. Okay, this is called parafilm. It's a stretchy little wax substance, and if you kind of stretch it as you wrap it around, you can make a really tight seal around here, help seal in. Uh, we also got some little clamps um, that you can use too. Um, to put around maybe uh, points here and here and, and here. Uh, if you don't feel like something's tightly connected there, you um, can talk to us and we'll get you going. And this is what it looks like after it's reacted for a little while. Um, you can see it's displaced quite a bit of water uh, into the test into the beaker. Okay, this will help seal the system. All right, um, so you're going to produce hydrogen gas out of here. And uh, we've got to figure out how much volume um, is there and what's the pressure of that gas. Okay, so hydrogen can be produced. It's going to go into here. And um, well, wait a second. Since we talked about water, right, there is already water as a gas sitting inside that beaker. So when we add more pressure of hydrogen there, uh, we've got those two gases. We've got to figure out what's there. So the hydrogen, um, or the hydrogen's yellow. It's not actually yellow. Um, water as a gas. It's not actually blue, but just for uh, designation. And so when the two gases are in there mixed, okay, uh, we got to think about and imagine that both of them are in there. Okay, so I'm going to call that green because that's blue and yellow mixed together. All right, and then that gas, the gas is, is a, the pressure in there gets greater and there's more molecules of hydrogen. The pressure increases. Well, it pushes the water down, and when it does that, the water gets forced out of uh, the flask through the tube and then it starts to fill up up here. It's kind of fun. Okay, and so the water fills up and uh, The amount of water that gets displaced the volume is going to be equal to the volume of the gas that was um, Introduced into the chamber Okay, and so you're going to be able to figure out how much water uh, was produced. Okay, so here it is again and uh, um, You're going to find that out by weighing uh, weighing this beaker. So you're going to take it to a top loading balance and weigh it. Well, it's important to know uh, there is pressure happening on this side of the flask. And so the gas has to really overcome uh, the pressure that's pushing on the other side of this tube. Well, what's that pressure? It's the barometric pressure, P bar. It's the atmospheric pressure that's pushing down. Okay? And so um, we got to think about that is the opposing force, barometric pressure that's uh, opposing the two gases that are in here. Okay, you got the pressure of hydrogen here and a little bit of water vapor. Okay, it's going to be mainly hydrogen, but there's a little bit of water vapor in there. And so those two have to be um, at least equal, and they'll probably overcome um, that pressure as it's filling up in here. So what we can say then now is that the, the pressure that's in here is going to be uh, equal to the barometric pressure. Because it will come back into equilibrium um, once uh, it displaces some of the water out of here. Okay? 
And so we can now say the barometric pressure is equal to the pressure of hydrogen and pressure of water, vapor pressure. Well, how do I know what the vapor pressure of water is? Well, you figure out the temperature in the room and you go um, fill in that information. Now I've rearranged this equation, subtracted um, P, uh, pressure of water from both sides, okay, and I sort of turned it around a little bit. Okay, now your manual calls it vapor pressure of water. I'm not really changing anything, sorry for the confusion. But you look that up. And uh, we'll provide this in the lab. We'll write it on the, um, the chalkboard. It's a number I'm going to look up on a mercury barometer. Okay? And so once you know that, you're going to know the pressure of hydrogen. And the volume of water now is going to, or the volume of water is going to be equal to the volume of hydrogen displaced. And so you're going to know the volume of water because you're going to go uh, weigh this. And we know that for every one gram of water, that's equal to one milliliter of water. So you can use the density of water to figure out the volume of water there is there to at least three decimal, uh, three sig digs. Okay, so use a template. And then the temperature of the system is just going to be the temperature uh, of the room that you used your laboratory thermometer to figure out. Use your thermometer, okay? And so you'll know that. All right, and so now you'll have all your variables, and you've got to rearrange PV equals NRT and solve for N, and you'll have all your variables figured out, and uh, you'll uh, 